The most typical way to run Marimo is to take your notebook, hook it up to a Python backend, and to then roll with it. But you can also run it from a browser, and you can also deploy Marimo apps from a browser. The whole point of this video is to show you how you can set this up, and also to host a Marimo notebook on GitHub pages, all with static files that you could also host yourself anywhere you like. So I made a GitHub repository, Marimo pages demo, and right now there's no GitHub pages whatsoever just yet, but I cloned this repo locally, and that's over here. I can have a look at what's in the folder. Right now it's just a readme file. So what I'm gonna do as a first step is I'm just gonna run Marimo and I'm just gonna edit a new file in sandbox mode. I'm gonna call that, uh, let's call it notebook.py. And there we are, this is the notebook in question. Let's, I don't know, maybe add a markdown cell, hello world, exclamation point. And then under that, we might be able to add a slider. And then down below over here, let's do something like slider dot value times hello, and then plus world. It's a little bit of a silly example, but we can see now that we have an interactive element. We can add hello here. So, okay, we have our first notebook. Then back in the terminal, control C to exit. That looks good. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna once again grab a Marimo, but I'm gonna run it with the help flag because then you can see all the commands that we have at our disposal. And there is this export flag over here. That's the one that's going to be of interest to us today. So let's again, look at the export command. Let's add help there. Let's also zoom in just a little bit. And from here, what we can see is that there's actually more than one output option. So one thing we could do is we could say, well, we wanna export the whole notebook as a normal Python file. You might also wanna export it as a Jupyter notebook or as a markdown file. You can also export it as HTML, but there's one specific option over here, HTML WASM. This is the setting that we want because that allows us to not only take all the static files that are defined in the Marimo notebook, it also allows us to package Python along with it. So let's just run that one command. Uh, let's also do help just for good measure because there's a bunch of settings. We have to point to a notebook file and then we can add a lot of flat. We have to point to a notebook file and then we also have to to find some sort of output directory. So that's what we're gonna do. And actually before running that, let's just make a directory and I'm gonna call that docs. In a moment, it's gonna be clear why, but what I should be able to do now is once again, take that HTML wasm command, take notebook.py and point to that docs folder as the output folder. We wanna run this in a sandbox environment. Yeah, that sounds fine. And as a result, we see that there's now a docs folder and inside of that docs folder is an index.html file and a bunch of other things. There's also some assets, I guess that can't hurt to just have a quick look at. Uh, this has a lot of JavaScript in it though. And if you squint your eyes, you might recognize that some of these things are things that Remo needs. So we've got something of a SQL cell over here. There's also a slides component, right? But anyway, we don't necessarily need that now. What I'm just gonna go ahead and do is hit get status. And then I'm gonna say, look, let's add that docs folder. Let's add the notebook file and let's commit page added and let's push. If I were now to go on GitHub, we're gonna see that the docs folder indeed has been added, but we don't have a link to GitHub pages just yet. And that's because we have to configure it. So I'm in the settings page for GitHub. There's a pages tab on the left. And then we can say, look, we wanna deploy from a branch and let's go for the main one. And then we can also configure from what folder. And typically docs is a good place to put your docs. So we're gonna pick that folder. That's also why I picked the name before. I'll hit save. There should now also be a side effect that confirms that everything we just did is correct. If you hit the cog on the right-hand side over here, you can now hit this use your GitHub pages website and it's automatically gonna fill in the GitHub pages link. You can now hit save changes and you should now see a link here that you can go ahead and click. You might wanna give it a minute at this point because it does take a little bit of time for GitHub to set all of this stuff up. But when I now open the link, I do see the hello world thing and I see the slider and I also see the hello, hello, hello thing that I added. So there you go. We are now able to run Marimo inside of GitHub pages. You're gonna notice though that we are running this in quote unquote app mode. You're not able to edit the notebook at this point. You're only able to see the widgets that you made. You're able to see the end result. We can also choose to deploy a notebook where the user is able to edit. And there's something to be said for that because if this is going to be a docs page for a specific project, then the user might also wanna fiddle around if it were. So let's uh, redo this. So I'm back in my terminal now and I'm just gonna run the help command one more time because there's a flag that we need. And there it is, this is the mode flag. That's the one that we wanna change. And note by the way, that if you wanna run this in app mode, you can also choose to show the code. That is still something you could do if you wanted to. But in this case, I think this mode is the only thing we need to change. So mode has to be edit. So we're still gonna to point to the docs, but we're gonna now say mode 
that is edit. Gonna hit run. It's asking for the sandbox environment. That feels fine. Let's hit yes. Ah, and now it's saying that it wants to override the already existing index.html page. And the default for this is that you typically don't want to override. That's a fair default, but I'm gonna add an extra flag now because let's assume that I'm running this in GitHub Actions or some sort of CI, then you typically want to automate this. And in that case, you wanna just force it. You always wanna generate the next version of the docs. So I'm just adding the force flag there. And now I still gotta give it input for the sandbox environment. I forgot about that. So let's add the sandbox flag as well. And now when I hit this command, no confirmation is needed whatsoever. So that's good. I'll run git status. I'm gonna hit that docs folder. I'm gonna hit commit. When I go to GitHub now, I can see the new commit and I can also see that there is a job running in the background. There's a yellow color over here that should turn green soon. GitHub pages is still building and it's green now. So that means if I were to go to GitHub pages one more time, then we see the whole experience. So we have our cells just like we had before. This is in full edit mode. And that also means that we can make changes as we see fit. And again, all of this is running in the browser. No Python backend, all via Pyodide. Everything's just running from this one index.html file. If you have a Python project and you want to have some sort of interactive documentation where the users can play around with your API, this is a great option. Just remember that GitHub Pages isn't the only place where you could put this. We are generating an index.html file, so you can really put that in anything. You can have fun with iframes. You can host it statically anywhere that you like. There is one downside though. And that is that there are a bunch of packages that simply don't work in this environment. Python packages need to be compiled towards what Pyodide needs in order for them to be able to run. And there are a couple of these packages that use Rust under the hood that haven't been compiled for this format. The main candidates that come to mind for this are things like PyTorch and some tokenizers, but there's bound to be other packages that won't work, or at least not for now. Finally, another thing to also keep in the back of your mind is that you do, of course, get a performance hit. You are running Python inside of a web browser, so there is overhead. And there's also a hard memory limit. You can't go over more than two gigabytes. So if you wanna share demos using this technique, just remember that it might be a good idea to keep it on the lightweight side. That said, full Marima notebooks, you don't have to install anything. This is also great for education. Definitely go nuts.